The next expansion releases on August 22, which means that Dragon Fight Season 4 will last for less than two more months. This is all the time we have to push our arena ratings and get the PvP rewards before they're gone forever. Last week, I spent most of my time pushing my Solo Suffer rating and farming the Legend title. I compared my build and gameplay with other high-rated Demon Hunters, I tested everything to see what works best, and I bring you the updated Havoc PvP guide for patch 10.2.7. Although many things have stayed the same, there are a lot of small details that have changed and that you can use to get an advantage in the arena. So make sure you watch till the end. Hello everyone and welcome to the Felfire Gaze channel. Don't forget to comment, like and subscribe and let's get into the video. We start with the different talent options that we have available. This is the build that we used at the beginning of the season and we will change it slightly. I call this the demon build and although it is not the only build that you will be using this season, it is definitely the most consistent one and the one you will play in most games. You should remove Scars of Suffering and Isolated Prey to get Growing Inferno and Burning Wound. These two talents will help you get a lot of passive damage that will blast the meters. Since you no longer have Isolated Prey, you are not trying to isolate a single target for a 5 second Chaos Nova stun and you should rather try to hit multiple targets with your Chaos Nova. The standard PvP talents for this build are Chaotic Imprint, Glimpse and Detainment. You will find a lot of success with these talents in most matches. You always play Chaotic Imprint no matter what. Glimpse is an absolute must pick to avoid CC if you play against any Druid, Mage, Lock or Rogue. And it's a very good talent in general. Detainment is a very powerful option that will help you CC enemy DPS during their big cooldowns like Warrior Avatar or Monk Serenity. Keep in mind that Imprison removes all dots, so if you are paired with a dot class like Shadow Priest or Affliction Warlock, it's best to only use Imprison on the enemy healer and probably not pick Detainment. Reverse Magic is a good alternative to dispel magic CC from your teammates. Remember that you cannot use Reverse Magic versus Affliction Warlocks because you will likely die the moment you dispel. You can swap Glimpse or Rain from above against double melee and I will show you how to get the most out of this talent later in the gameplay section. Finally, against the Monology Warlocks you should pick Blood Moon. This talent is kinda bugged and if you target the Warlock pet or any of his demons and cast Consume Magic, it will give you a demon soul that increases your damage done by 20% for 15 seconds. And you can do this all game long. Yes, you heard it right. You can have 20% extra damage buff for the entire game and completely destroy the Monology Warlocks with huge damage. The demon build is your bread and butter that you will be using in most games. except the demon build, you should also be using a second build that I like to call the fire build. You will be dropping Shadow Destiny and Cycle of Hatred to get Know Your Enemy and the fire inside. Moreover, the third PvP talent will always be Cleansed by Flame. This is a very nice build that you will be using specifically against Elemental Shamans and Frost Mages. These two specs root you all the time with magic roots that you can dispel with your Immolation Aura. Except their roots, you will also be dispelling Flame Shock and Frost Bomb, completely countering their damage for free. The Fire build is always played with Cleansed by Flame and Chaotic Imprint. Against Frost Mages, you also play Glimpse. Against Elemental Shamans, you can replace Glimpse with either Detainment, Reverse Magic or End from Above, depending on the partners of the Elemental Shaman. The thought process on which of these talents to play is the same with the demon build. We move on to the gear that has the same priority we had at the beginning of the season. Our best stats are versatility mastery and we want to drop as much versa as possible to get as much mastery as possible. The best way to do that is to craft many pieces. You should craft versatility mastery chest and boots with a free pvp token from the seasonal quest and add blue silk and lining to both of them. Then you can craft the engineering braces with full mastery and you can craft the neck, the belt and the cloak with versatility mastery. For as long as you do not have enough sparks you can use the versa mastery cloak, belt and bracer from Conflicts of Strife. You use your Forced bonus on head, shoulders, gloves and legs. And for the trinket you want to use the insignia of Alacrity with a passive agility proc. Your best slot rings come from PvE and they are the Seal of Diana's Chosen and the Seal of Filial Duty. You can easily get them by doing some LFR bosses from the raid that is awakened each week. By killing any random boss, you will eventually loot 4 antique bronze bullions and trade them for the 2 rings at this vendor in Valdraken. You will only get the rings at item level 492, so you will have to do some PV to upgrade them all the way to 528 and 535 respectively. If you don't want to bother doing this, you can get 2 Versa Mastery crafted rings instead. In that case, you should prioritize crafting rings over Bracer Belt and Clock that can all be covered by the Conflict of Strife World PvP gear. Finally, you can get whatever weapons you want as long as they have Versatility Mastery. You wanna get one Agility Mastery socket and everything else Mastery Versatility. And some leads on back and bracers, waiting stats on chest, shadowed belt clasp on the belt, armor kit on the legs, planes run and breeze on the boots, double mastery on rings, and double sophic devotion on weapons. We will be wrapping up this video with some gameplay tips. In every game, you want to use your metamorphosis as soon as possible to get it on cooldown ASAP, especially in Solo Shuffle, your second metamorphosis after 2 minutes is often the breakpoint 
where you overwhelm the enemy team and you win the game. The faster you press meta at the beginning, the faster you will get there. If you can survive up to that point, many times you will just win with raw damage. This is where detainment comes in extremely handy, allowing you to CC the enemy DPS during their big burst, extend the game and survive until the second metamorphosis. Detainment can also be used offensively on targets that have big defensive cooldowns such as pain suppression to completely deny any healing on them for a while. You swap to a different target for a bit and come back once the defensives are over. Keep hitting whatever you can and do not chase too much. This is especially true when you play the demon build that allows you to extend metamorphosis and reduce eye beam cooldown when doing damage to something. When using the fire build, save at least one immolation aura charge to cast it whenever you are rooted or you have frost bomb on you, so you can remove those debuffs and completely counter your opponents. Remember that the hunter metamorphoses are not just your big DPS cooldowns, they are also mobility spells, so use them to close the gap between you and your target. Do not cast Ferras twice only to then cast the hunt from melee range. It has 50 yard range, so you might as well use it to instantly get back to your target and have those two Felleras charges ready to continue chasing them if they kite you after you connect. Rain from above deals a lot of damage. It should be used as a defensive, offensive and cooldown reduction spell at the same time. At the beginning of the match, you rush in and press all your buttons. Your eye beam, essence break, the hand, metamorphosis, all of your CC abilities and blur. After fighting for roughly 30-40 seconds, everything is on cooldown. At that point, you are at your weakest. That's when you want to cast Rain from above, protecting yourself from any damage, doing massive DPS with fell lands and giving yourself a window for your spells to come back off cooldown. When you land, you will have another burst combo with stun, eye beam and essence break and blur will be coming back off cooldown, so you will be ready to enter the fray again. I described the demon build playstyle in detail in the gameplay section of my previous PvP guide, around the 6 minute marker. All of this information is still completely relevant and will continue to do so until the end of the season. If you wanna know the best opener you can do in each arena match, as well as all the potential burst combos you should use to generate pressure, make sure to click the video on screen or the link in the description and go to the gameplay section at the 6 minute marker. Don't forget to comment, like and subscribe and see you in the next one!